Rams fans, welcome in on this edition of Rams Showcase. It is here. The season begins. We preview Rams at Lions Sunday Night Football. Plus, we'll hear from some Lions fans as we uh, check out this playoff rematch. And later, regular season fan quesos. I answer your Rams-related questions. Let's rock. This is Ram Showcase with your host, Sheriff Joe Bags. Yes, we have made it. This is Ram Showcase. I am Sheriff Joe Bags in the 2024 NFL season is upon us. We are pumped about it. Of course, uh, Rams opening up in prime time at the Detroit Lions. Uh, the team that knocked us out on the same field they knocked us out on is where we will open our regular season. And we are all absolutely stoked about it. We'll be talking, of course, Rams-Lions game preview. Got the full preview uh, just around the corner. We also do have interviews from a few different other podcasters. Kurt Steele making his uh, return to Rams Showcase. He's the host of the Boss Up Ball Out podcast. Detroit Lions fan, of course, as uh, well as Jason Harwood and, uh, J- excuse me, Jason Harwood and Jacob Litton from the Talking Grit podcast, a newer podcast in the Lions world, which is uh, just my way of telling you also, hey, it's never too late to start your podcast, dude. Go ahead and hop on it. I'm in season nine, but if you uh, want to make this season one, do it. And uh, hey, if you need uh, if you need some some advice on on something, I'm just going to tell you that uh, just 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 have fun. <laughs> All right. Have fun and try your best. All right. That's the first rule of Fight Club. Um, Ramshowcase.com at Ramshowcase at Sheriff Joe Bags. That's where you can follow on the Internet. Let's go ahead, though, and dive on into the action again. Game preview right around the corner. But first, a couple things to uh, take care of as the Los Angeles Rams have hired former Nebraska head coach Scott Frost. It's getting a little frosty in Los Angeles, something that doesn't happen very often. But hey, this is actually going to be rather interesting. His job title is Senior Football Analyst, which is kind of exactly what I want to be, I think, when I grow up. I don't know exactly all that that entails, but it sounds like something that I would enjoy, right? Uh, he will help out on all three phases. It does sound like, uh, like for the most part, he will be more of a special teams guy as the special teams assistant uh, did get swapped out here late. So uh, it looks like Frost will be helping out there. But we'll be in all three phases. We'll have his uh, hand in the offense as well as the defense a little bit. Way back in the day, dude was a third round pick by the New York Football Jets. He's been coaching those since 2002. Most recently in Nebraska, that happened uh, 2018 to 2022. He also, before that, by the way, was uh, the UCF head coach 2016-2017. If you remember that uh, wild 2017 UCF, yeah, he was the head coach for that. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, Google search, uh, just look into it. I don't want to dive into UCF and their weirdness right now, all right? Uh, But uh, before that, as well, uh, offensive coordinator from Oregon, so definitely plenty of experience. We know Scott Frost, at least we can know Scott Frost because of the internet. If you aren't that well aware of Scott Frost, uh, definitely worth looking up, and I think that that will excite you in terms of what he's able to bring uh, to the Rams coaching staff. I think that's Definitely not a bad hire uh, by any means. Also, in other news, we did get the uniform schedule officially. Let me uh, let me pull it up here for you because uh, I, I I love getting the uniform schedule. We usually get it a lot earlier than uh, than we did uh, this time around, but that is a okay. Uh, of course, uh, week one will be in the whites uh, in Detroit. Bone only uh, we only see that twice as expected in Arizona. Which, honestly, I want to know how many times we haven't worn bone in Arizona since we've had the bone. Uh, And then uh, uh, also hosting uh, the Minnesota Vikings in week eight, Rams will be rocking the bone there. So we will see it at SoFi, which I absolutely love. Kind of feels like we'll see bone on bone in Arizona, which I don't love, but it's okay. I just don't like when uh, the jerseys match the pants. I just think it's a weird look. Looks like a onesie to me, and you'll never change my mind. (laughs) Okay. Uh, But of course... Uh, like I said, uh, week one will be uh, the white. We won't see uh, the royal jerseys until Green Bay in week five, a game that I will be at. Uh, but yeah, nothing too crazy. Looks like really on the road, we're in white and at home, we're in the blue, which is pretty standard. We will uh, see in uh, week three, though, 
hosting the San Francisco 49ers as the Rams home opener. Rams will be in white for that game. So rather exciting stuff. All right. Uh, I know we're pretty early still, but uh, you know what's next is the game preview. And with that being said, we will take a quick break here on the other side. Rams, Lions, Sunday Night Football, full game preview on Ram Showcase. Ram Showcase officially back in full force after uh, the, the the stint of two job sheriff Joe Bags, but we're back on single job, which means full attention into Ram Showcase, which means game previews and all that good stuff. We are back in full force. If uh, you are listening audio only, there is a video version of this podcast. You can find it on Facebook as well as uh, YouTube. Facebook is the preferred on my side. But you know what? Hey, whatever's good for you, dude. Just check it out. Check out the podcast. Intake my content, okay? <laughs> uh, but uh, there also will be just the game preview if you want to check out uh, that alone. Uh, so check it on out. Let's go ahead and dive in, dude. No more messing around. All right. Los Angeles Rams at the Detroit Lions. Sunday Night Football for Week 1. Taking over at Ford Field. This is a 5.20 p.m. kickoff time. It's a dome, so we don't really need to worry about the weather. But if you are going to the game... Uh, looks like a high of 69. Nice uh, in Detroit uh, with it peaking around 5 o'clock. So tailgate time, looking probably pretty smooth on that. Head on into the game. Uh, should be a, a pretty nice day. The NBC TV crew, we will hear from Mike Tarico, Chris Collinsworth, Melissa Stark on the sideline. You radio listeners out there, we do appreciate you. Uh, ESPN, 710 AM. That it will be JB Long, MJD, and DeMarco Farr as usual. If you are a better, the Rams sitting at plus three and a half for this game right now on the FanDuel Sportsbook. Money line plus 164 if you're taking the LA Rams over under 51.5. That feels about right, man. Vegas, I feels like, is nailing this right now, except for uh, I, would, uh, I, would, I would favor the Rams. Because you know what? I'm biased and I'm okay with that. Let's get into our pants picks. All right, so we've been doing this for a few years. Uh, myself, Rams House, as well as Payo Time. We always do, uh, we know now the uniform schedule, so we know what jerseys the Rams are going to wear. We always find out 24 hours ahead of time what color pants the Rams are going to wear. And uh, for this first week with the Rams wearing the white jerseys in Detroit, a team who wears blue. So we all three picked the sole pants for this one. Now feel free to participate as well. Drop your comments below and uh, participate in pants picks very exciting sweeping the nation so get on it now because uh, it's gonna it's gonna overwhelm you okay it's before you want you want to catch this trade now or it picks up too much speed some game notes in this one uh so obviously the most recent rams game was that playoff loss in detroit to matthew stafford he got booed in his return and then loses to jared goff by one point and I don't want to go too deep into this without, um, this is a one-way conversation right here, so I can't get any rebuttals on it. So I don't want to dive too hard into this, um, but I will say, um, and I did bring this up in uh, those interviews that you'll see here in a minute, but uh, that that uh, Goff getting, or excuse me, Stafford being booed by the Detroit Lions fans, I thought was ridiculous. Um, I, I understand the situation. It's playoffs. You've moved on. You've got your new guy now. Um, but what Matthew Stafford did for the Lions, I just, I felt like it was not good. So that's just my own perspective. If you disagree, that's totally fine. I just didn't love it. Um, and I think that he was surprised by it actually. And, you know, Kelly Stafford's not going to the game. And I think it's, I think it really is one of those things. And I know, um, you'll hear from Kurt Steele, Kurt Steele a little bit later, who kind of mentions like, is like, yeah, but he's gone now. So after he retires, he'll be good. And I think that the Detroit Lions fan base just burned that uh, in the playoff game. Uh, I think that there's got to be a certain level of class and sportsmanship, no matter what the situation is. I don't care if it's your first home playoff game in 32 years. You don't boo the guy that brought you into some kind of relevance. I know that those, most of those teams were bad, but he's the best quarterback that team has ever had. Still to this day, don't tell him, try to tell me golf is better. He's not. So I just felt like that was a little bit weird. That'd be like if... Uh, you know, somebody like Isaac Bruce, who ended his career with the 49ers, if he showed up, we're like, boo, get out of here. Like, no, that's ridiculous. That guy was amazing for us. And rivalries aside, that's the person there, the human being that you supported and supported you for so long. I just kind of disagree with that. So feel free to drop up. Uh, you do disagree. Feel free to let me know. Or if you agree, feel free to let me know that as 
well. Uh, but the Rams can uh, definitely uh, look uh, look at that game, and I would say they, they, the Rams played a good football game, um, but I think that there was some left out there. Didn't really feel like the Rams were at their best, but let's be real here. The football gods were not going to let the Rams win that game. The Detroit Lions' first home playoff game in 32 years going against their former quarterback with the guy who feels like he's been burned by that other franchise and Jared Goff? Of course the football gods gave them the nod on that one. They were never a Super Bowl team. I think that they were very, very good. But, I mean, the two teams that were in the Super Bowl are better, and I think a lot of AFC teams are better. That's all kind of beside the point. I'm not just trying to trash the Lions, I promise. But uh, I will say that like that, that game, it did just feel like the football gods were just not going to let the Rams win that game. We were going to lose it, which makes me feel like this game could go in favor. If football gods are, you know, having, a, having their hand in this one, kind of feels like the Rams win this one, but maybe meet up again later in the playoffs. So we'll, we'll kind of see, all right? Um, but either way, a former quarterback, uh, you know, against uh, it happened. What happened, happened, whatever. Now we turn the page, though, and this team that the Rams will be going against, let's be honest here a little bit. As Rams fans, let's be a little bit vulnerable with ourselves here a little bit and kind of project that onto the Detroit Lions. So I think that this could be a bit of a dud year for the Detroit Lions. And I don't say that to say that they're going to be a bad football team, that I think that they're going to miss the playoffs and all that stuff. I'm not saying that. I just do think that it's possible that they take a step back this year. And that is for one very specific, well, two reasons, one very specific reason. Two is, as a Rams fan, we kind of look at um, look at the, the, the two seasons after making a, Super Bowl, making a Super Bowl appearance, which was obviously the 2018 season, 2021 season. 19 season, kind of a dud. Did okay, but didn't make the playoffs. 22 season, was a disaster. Got, of course, just wrecked by injuries, but we know that that can happen and anything can happen. The, the uh, 2019 Rams, was they were not a bad football team, but the way that it kind of worked, they just weren't playing as well as we knew they could. It's not impossible. You know what I mean? So now, not that the Lions are going to be, like I said, bad. They're not going to be, uh, I, I think, just like a terrible team fighting for a top five pick or anything like that. And I want to make this be known that this is a Joe opinion, okay? This is the, 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 the opinions shared on Ram Showcase. They're not representative. They are rep- I'm the only one here, so they are representative, actually. So I don't know where I was going with, uh, with that example. But the fact that the Lions, though, my other reason, they had an extremely emotional playoff run extremely emotional playoff run, all right? So you have the first home playoff game. We've mentioned that a bunch of times in so many years. The first time since I've been, well, second time since I've been alive, I think. And then you have, uh, you you go against your division rival in the Green Bay Packers and their up and coming quarterback. He, you know, throws a pick to, to end the game and you kind of go on from there. Then you go into the NFC Championship game where you let, Kyle Shanahan, of all people, come back on you. He, Kyle Shanahan's known for blowing leads, not coming back from being, you know, I think, what was it, 18 points down? So I think that you kind of look at that just emotional run of the, uh, of the Detroit Lions in the playoffs last year, and I do think that that needs to be considered, that it is absolutely possible that this team takes a bit of a step back. Also, with the the Lions going to the NFC Championship game, that is the most, uh, we have an extra regular season game, and they went further than they ever have. So, that is the longest season this team has ever had as well. So, could they take a step back? I absolutely think so. I absolutely think so, and that no one will really see it coming. Like that, the the Lions are one of those teams that could be the fall-off team while a, a team like Washington, who I'm actually kind of high on this year, uh, kind of rises up out of nowhere, seemingly, even though you bring in like a Bobby Wagner, Austin Eckler, you bring in talent and a new coach, it, things should kind of be in the right direction. You know what I mean? But, and, and to be fair, I could absolutely be wrong. The Detroit Lions could be awesome this year. All right. Could be wrong. Dan Campbell, a bit of a different animal. He is not like most head coaches. All right. So that's got to be considered. This Lions team also just has a bit of a different attitude than most NFL teams as well. So yeah, they could be the exception to all of this, where it doesn't matter how emotional things get the, the year previous, they're going to come in ready to work in week one. But we can just 
can we just admit that it's not impossible? That's all I ask for Lions fans, to admit that it's not impossible that the Lions do take a bit of a step back from where they were at last year. That's all. Injuries in this game. Uh, we don't have uh, the Rams report yet, but we do know that Melifonwu and DJ Reader of the Detroit Lions uh, were limited on Wednesday, and Lauren Strickland uh, did not participate in practice on Wednesday. As far as the others go, like we kind of know that Rob Havenstein is up in the air. Uh, we know that Puka Nakua should be good to go, but we're kind of just keeping our, our eyes on that. When I record on Wednesdays, it's always a little bit difficult to tell uh, the future of, of, uh, of what the, um, the, the injuries will look like. It's just a little bit too early to really tell. So just keep your eyes on the injury reports. If I see any major updates, I will uh, let you all I'll pass that along, of course. Let's take a look at the matchup of this one. Um, I'm going to look at the Rams offense versus the Lions defense. And these rankings are actually going to come from last year. So just go ahead and pop your eyes onto those. Uh, Rams offense, obviously, you know, a top 10 unit overall, almost top 10 in running. But the Detroit Lions, great against the run last year, definitely struggled against the pass. So they're uh, revamped secondary. I don't know if we'll see them kind of kick off the season really strong or if we'll kind of see that build up. That could, though, play into the favor of the Rams uh, on that uh, on that standpoint there. So your best matchup on uh, on this one for the Rams offense versus the Lions defense. I'm going to go with the Rams tackles against Aiden Hutchinson. So we know that uh, A.J. Jackson has been suspended for the first two games. So we will see Joseph Noteboom on the uh, left tackle spot and with Rob Havenstein up in the air. We don't know if that will be Big Rob or if we'll see Warren McClendon uh, play at that right tackle spot. But either way, these guys definitely, even starters, let's be real here. Let's, um, even starters will have their hands full with an Aiden Hutchinson. The guy's extremely talented. So uh, definitely the matchup to watch. Keep your eyeballs. He's 97, right? I think he's 97. <laughs> Keep your eyeballs on him and uh, and 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 just kind of pay attention to what he's doing because that will impact the Rams game plan uh, depending on what he's looking like, especially in the first half. Three to C on the Rams offensive side. We're going to start with Kyron Williams. Kyron Williams. Uh, so Williams had an awesome season last year that ended definitely on a pretty good upswing coming in with a legit legitimate backup on the bench in Blake Corum. Uh, this could be a bit of an awesome season for uh, Kyron Williams. And I don't think there's really any reason not to think that Kyron Williams will have an awesome year or at least start awesome. Uh, the way he ended last year as one of the best running backs in the league, uh, we're hoping that that carries over. So something to keep an eye on. Next up, tight end Colby Parkinson. Listed as the tight end one on the unofficial depth chart with Tyler Higby being put on the pup. Uh, for the first four games, of course, we won't see uh, uh, big rig Higgs. Uh, but this is the first chance to see uh, Parkinson in a Rams uniform, which is extremely exciting. With a lot of attention going outside to those wideouts, Colby could be an underrated piece in, uh, in like the third down situation and red zone. So it's definitely somebody to keep your eyes on. Colby Parkinson, I don't think is getting enough credit as far as an offseason addition for the Rams. I think that's going to be a big one. I think we see it right away. And last year, we're going to go with Blake Corum, the RB2 behind Kyron Williams. First chance chance to see Blake as well. So we'll surely get some reps, and I think we're all curious curious to see uh, exactly what Blake looks like in this Rams offense. Either way, though, should be rather exciting. Uh, let's take a look at the other side. This is the Lions offense versus the Rams defense. Again, our numbers coming from last year. The Lions offense was on fire last year, a top five unit in every category the Rams defense middle of the road had some trouble against the pass did okay against the run but I think that these numbers if you kind of break them up into and you could probably do this with most teams but if you took the Rams defensive rankings and chopped off that first half of the season we probably are much much higher and I'd have to do those and I'd have to look up the splits here I didn't do that ahead of time so it's my bad, but uh, the Rams defense ended the season very, very strong. So that is something to keep an eye on as well, but a very, very different defense. So I'm not sure how much to really look into uh, what the Rams ended with. All three captains are gone, uh, new defensive coordinator. So we don't really know what this defense is going to be all about. Like your best matchup here is going to be Jared Verse versus Taylor Decker. Jared Verse looks to have all of the makings to be a very strong pass rusher for the Rams and I believe is currently the favorite to be uh, defensive rookie of the year, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe that has changed. He's definitely way up there, though, if that is the case. And first look, 
going against Taylor Decker, who, you know, I mean, he's not super old or anything like that. He's, he's past 30 now. I want to say he's 31, but he's kind of getting there, but nothing too crazy. But this is going to be a great experienced tackle for Jared Verse to go against in his first NFL start, which I think is kind of perfect. You go against a guy who's a vet, then we go to Arizona next week where he should be able to light that up and, and destroy Kyler Murray's life um, like Aaron Donald used to do all those years. So um, so we'll kind of see how this this first one shakes out. Your three to C. We'll start with Kobe Turner, effectively entrusted with the defense entering his second season. That's amazing. He's doing the Krav Maga stuff like uh, Aaron Donald was, you know, the knife video. Yeah, Kobe Turner's working out with that guy. So I'm, I'm not saying, man, I'm just saying that could be pretty awesome, right? So he may never be Aaron Donald because let's face it, nobody is, nobody can. Uh, but Kobe Turner, he's the real deal, all right? Entering year two, now a captain. It'll be so much fun to see how Turner handles that new role. And right away in a road environment in primetime, uh, the first time as a captain, I think that's absolutely awesome. A sweet test to go ahead and kick that off. Your other captain on defense is our next in our three to see in Quentin Lake, another leader of this defense and a guy that we actually will probably, I would say, uh, see hit 100% snap rate uh, multiple times this season. So I think that we will probably see it week one. If not, it'll be like sitting the 97, 98, whatever, how many snaps we have kind of thing. Um, but I do think that he's going to get utilized very heavily. He always flashed to the point where we knew he could be awesome, but this is it. This is his chance, man. Um, I think Rams fans all kind of know it's like, yeah, he's got skills, but we just don't see him that often. So what gives, man? So this year we'll get a very good look at Quentin Lake, which is going to be very exciting because I think Quentin Lake is even underrated by Rams fans. I like Quentin Lake a lot. He's been voted captain by his teammates, which is absolutely awesome, of course. Um, and I would say a breakout player uh, selection has never been easier for me to pick. Quint Lake is my breakout candidate. And I think that's so easy, almost too easy where I feel bad about it. But I also feel like Quint Lake's going to have an awesome year. So there's that. And our last on the three to see, we kind of already talked about him. But Jared Verse, first chance to see Verse. And uh, really all Rams fans have seen is like the public practice stuff. We had a couple of videos of uh, Verse making some Cowboys uh, try to remember what their degrees are in, uh, trying to be like, oh man, I may not be doing this here in a few weeks. So uh, what was what was that? Like, what was I doing? Uh, getting their resumes ready and stuff. Uh, but really, first chance to see Verse legitimately. Uh, the Rams' first, uh, first, first round pick since Jared Goff in 2016. Uh, we're going to see him touch the field finally. But in fairness, the last time we put a, Jared first round pick onto the field. The Miami Dolphins uh, smoked that Jared. So may, hopefully this is a better first start for this Jared uh, first round pick. Let's dive into some uh, connections on uh, this matchup here. So former Rams that were on the Lions, there is only the one player. We're down to one. That is Jared Goff. Of course, so Brad Holmes was with the Rams for like, was it 19 years? Maybe it was about there, 19, 20 years. Uh, that Aub or excuse me that um uh that uh, Brad Holmes was with the Rams. He ended as the director of player scouting and then is now the GM of the Detroit Lions. And I would say doing a great job, <laughs> you know. Um, but that is it for as far as players. Former Lions on the Rams, of course. Matthew Stafford spent a good chunk of time in um in uh, Detroit. Jonah Jackson coming over for the first time will be uh, donning the horns. And then uh, Aubrey Pleasant was uh, coaching there in 21 and 22. Some other connections in this one. Uh, we have Demarcus Robinson did play in Baltimore with the Ravens with Kevin Zeitler. That happened in 2022. College connections here. Jonah Jackson played at Ohio State with Jamison Williams. That happened in 2019. Demarcus Robinson, another one here. Uh, he played at Florida with Alex Anzalone. Kyron Williams played at Notre Dame with Brock Wright and Brandon Joseph. Blake Corum played in Michigan with Aiden Hutchinson. That was both in 2020 and 2021. Rob Havenstein, Big Rob, played at Wisco with Kevin Zeitler. That was 2010 to 2011. And Jacob Hummel played at Iowa State with David Montgomery. And our final one, Byron Young and Jalen McCullough 
uh, the undrafted secondary player that stick, stuck around this year as a rookie. They played at Tennessee with Hendon Hooker as their quarterback for three seasons. They all played together. That was 21, 22, and 23. Take a look at some milestones as we enter this season. So we'll kind of dive in uh, like as as the season goes on, we'll kind of be keeping our eyes on these. So this is something that we'll watch uh, all year. But some that we hit last year, we had uh, Matthew Stafford becoming the fifth all-time uh, passing touchdowns leader in franchise history and 15th, in, oh, excuse me, uh, 11th all-time in passing touchdowns in NFL history. So almost top 10, almost top 10, Matthew. We're getting there, dude. Big Rig Higgs is now 14th all-time in receiving yards in Rams history, 9th all-time in receptions in franchise history, 15th all-time in receiving touchdowns in franchise history. All those numbers won as far as tight ends go, though. Cooper Cup became the, uh, he got 4th all-time receiving touchdowns in franchise history, and he did become number one all time in franchise history in postseason receptions. So hopefully we can uh, increase that number this year. And uh, Big Rob Havenstein, uh, he's 12th all time now in starts in Rams history. Puka Nakua, you know damn well what Puka Nakua did last year. John Johnson, 8th all time in tackles in franchise history. 12th all time in solo tackles in franchise history some that we're kind of keeping our eyes on as the season does get underway here though uh sean McVay needs just three wins to become the winningest coach in rams history he currently has 77 and uh the record sitting at uh 79 robinson did coach nine seasons though in uh for the rams McVeigh is in season eight, so definitely uh, pretty solid there. And so I'll say this as well. Sean McVay does need three wins to become the winningest coach in franchise history. The Rams' third game is their home opener hosting the San Francisco 49ers. I'm not saying. I'm just saying. You know what I mean? Cooper Cup, he needs just one point to pass Matt Gay for 16th in points in franchise history matt gay man i mean obviously kickers they kind of they kind of rack them up you know what i mean uh we've got uh, jeff wilkins and greg zurlein is one and two and i know uh, uh lansford is right there as well so i hope i want to say he's three uh matthew stafford another one we're keeping our eyeballs on needs 128 passing yards to pass sam bradford for eighth most in franchise history so he is right in line for that and uh, we'll probably see that in the first half in Detroit on Sunday Night Football. Also needs 3,953 passing yards to hit 60,000 all-time. Definitely not impossible. 4K year out of uh, Matthew Stafford slinging the rock, especially when you got uh, Cooper Cup, Puka Nakua, Demarcus Robinson, Tutu Atwell, Jordan Whittington, and, uh, and then the, the, the stable of tight ends in, in uh, Tyler Higby, Colby Parkinson, Davis Allen, Hunter Long. Uh, and then you got the backs out of the backfield as well. They can catch the football. Kyrie Williams, Blake Corum, uh, Ronnie Rivers. So uh, very realistic that uh, Sean, or that Matthew Stafford could be hitting that um, that four thousand uh, range here. So uh, it, it is time though. We talk we talk to some uh, some Lions fans about what they have to say about this game. A Lions fan perspective, as of course we had the whole off season to uh, to kind of reassess and reevaluate our squads going into this one. Uh, the Lions obviously making it super, super close to the Super Bowl and then uh, falling a little bit short there. So first up, we are going to talk to Jason Harwood and Jacob Litton from the Talking Grit podcast. These guys are absolutely awesome. Be sure to check their stuff out. They've got all their socials and all that stuff as far as uh, where you can like listen to the podcast. I know Spotify is one they, they were adamant about hitting. So uh, definitely follow them up, dude. YouTube as well. They are doing audio only, but... I think with the right motivation and maybe some Rams fans being like, hey, I want to see you guys. Uh, maybe they'll, uh, they'll kick over to the video world. huh? How does that sound? So well, let's go ahead and dive into it. The Talking Grit podcast, talking with Jason Harwood and Jason Litton. All right. It is week one. The Los Angeles Rams at the Detroit Lions. We get our revenge game so early in the season. How exciting is that? We are, uh, of course, uh, getting ready for this game. We are back to the NFL season, and I've got Jason here. I've got Jacob here, two Lions fans who uh, want to give me uh, a little bit of perspective. What is uh, your, your your podcast? Jason, uh, can you can you kind of describe your podcast a little bit for these uh, Rams fans? Yeah, so it's called Talking Grit. Uh, 
I don't know how well it's known outside of Detroit fandom, but grit is the tagline. It's a Dan Campbell special, um, Brad Holmes special. You know, they get those type of players. So that's, we just went with talking grit. We're two Lions fans. Um, you know, I think very similar to you, Sheriff, and the fact that we just love our team a lot and we just like talking about our team. And Jacob and I uh, would just bore a lot of people at work just talking about the Lions all the time. So we've decided this is our outlet. This is what we're going to do. And uh, yeah, and we found our, our niche. So we're we're happy. So that's yeah. so funny, dude. I used to say that that that's why I started Ram Showcase, because I was just unloading this stuff on like my sister who did not care. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, right. That's awesome, man. So uh, yeah, let's go ahead and talk about it, man. Week one, Rams at Lions. So obviously there's a lot of uh, moving pieces to this. We know the superstars. We know you've got Jared Goff. We know you've got eight. We know you got St. Brown. Is there anybody on the offensive side that you would say uh, we'll, we'll start with Jacob here is that is underrated as far as like you don't think Rams fans are giving this player enough credit who might kind of ruin this game uh, it's kind of interesting because he is a national name uh, if you're looking at fantasy draft boards and things alike he's kind of towards the end of that but that's gonna be Jamison Williams um, someone that was high profile but kind of you know has been sitting in the back he's had injury problems he had a suspension he's been going through he really came on last year, especially towards the end. He had a really good showing in that NFC Championship game. And, you know, he really he had a really good training camp. So that's somebody that we we have high hopes for this year. I think he's really going to, you know, turn some heads and really showcase the ability that he has. And he is the, the two behind St. Brown, correct? Correct. Yep. He's our number two guy right now. Okay. Who's three? Uh, so as of right now, our number three is Khalif Raymond. Um, okay. That was kind of an interesting training camp battle that we had a couple of the taller, like X kind of receivers. None of them really panned out for us so far. We did pick up Tim Patrick, who was cut from the Broncos. Right now he's on the practice squad um, with the intent to play, hopefully, you know, in the next couple of weeks here. But as of right now, you've got Amon Ra, obviously. J-Mo is going to be number two. Khalif Raymond is going to be your third target. Sam Laporte is going to be a lot of those targets too. Obviously, tight end, but he's going to be operating wide receiver three, I guess you would say. Definitely, definitely. All right, and and uh, Jason on the on the defensive side, is there anybody on that side of the ball that is just kind of like that? Like same same exact question that, that maybe Rams fans aren't considering this guy because he's not Aiden. You know what I mean? Like, is that is there anybody yeah. that sticks on? So it's actually on the other side of Aiden. I'm going to say Marcus Davenport. You know, former first round pick of the Saints. Uh, didn't play. He hasn't, you know, he's had an injury problem, but he's healthy now. Um, you know, every day our, you know, the Lions offensive line is, you know, one of the tops in the league, at least that's, you know, that's a natural perspective, I would say. And so this defensive line, you know, they're saying Marcus Denbor is one of the best bull rushes that they've seen. And so my feeling is Aiden's just always working really hard. We've needed a bookend for him and we're hoping that Marcus Davenport can provide that bookend. So I think, uh, that and um, you know we don't know about DJ Reader. DJ Reader is a wild card right now, um, as far as injury risk. We know what kind of player he's going to be in the defensive interior defensive line. We just don't know. Um, he's coming off an injury last year. He is off the pup list. He could be active. He he is practicing, but he didn't practice until this last week. So we don't know if he's going to play. So those two guys are you know were. You know, they're not Dayton Hutchinson, they're not the Liam McNeil, but they're guys that can, um, we're going to need to perform to, you know, keep your guys' running game in check and uh, not give Stafford too much time because we know what he can do with a lot of time. Yeah, just to, I mean, you don't need to rush him, you know, he'll be all right. Uh, yeah. Like, you know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. we'll with you, uh, Jason, on this one. Uh, we'll, we'll keep it defensive related, but this time I want to flip it over to the Rams. Do you think, uh, from your perspective, the Lions fan perspective. Is there a player on this defense that is now Aaron Donald list that you are kind of keeping your eyes on as a potential, like, Hey, this guy might ruin our day. Well, we don't know about, you know, your line. You got a couple high draft picks up there and they haven't played. So <laughs> that's the question mark to me. Like were these guys from Florida state, are they, you know, how are they going to perform? Um, we, it's interesting because um, we were, Someone asked our offensive line, how they how are they preparing for your rookies? Because there's no tape on them. They didn't play in the preseason. And uh, one of our offensive linemen, Mahogany, our draft picks, played against them in college. So they are picking his brain about possible moves and stuff like that. So 
it was interesting to get that perspective of how in depth the scouting can go and what resources you're going to use. Cause you could look at college tape and all that stuff, but you know, we have a player in house that has actually played against these guys. They can give a little scouting report. So, um, you know, when you guys have a new secondary, just, you know, it's really just a lot of unknowns for me as a Lions fan looking the other side. We always knew Aaron Donald was going to be the guy. That's how you game plan against him. Um, you knew that coming in number one. Now, now you, it's kind of an unknown, especially week one. We have nothing to look back on. So, you know, I, it's, it's kind of an open ended question. It's really tough, but I'm more concerned about, you know, the unknown of your offense or your defensive line. Yeah, I, that's definitely a big question mark. We have those same questions. We just don't don't know yet. I could send you some uh, some footage of the Rams Cowboys uh, uh, joint practice where uh, Jared Verse was out here ruining some days, dude. So, yeah. <laughs> no, I don't want to see any of those. I don't. I want to sleep well before the game. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> and uh, Jacob, for you and uh, that that Lions defensive perspective, uh, who are you looking at on this on this Rams side uh, on the offense that uh, that maybe. It, that you're kind of thinking is like, is this guy going to be the reason that we, you know, have a have a rough day that we go to sleep sad on Sunday night football? Or? You know, obviously you're looking at Puka and you're looking at Cooper Cup, especially after the way the last playoff game went. Puka, 181 yards and a touchdown. Both of our corners that were there last year uh, are no longer on the team. So we do have a new secondary, Terry on Arnold, Carlton Davis, Amik Robertson. Um, and it's Rakestraw, another rookie. We have a revamp secondary. That's going to be an interesting matchup, I guess, is how well are these guys going to be able to hold up against receivers of that caliber. Uh, you know, our run defense was really good last year. The Rams kind of have a revamped uh, run game. They've got Blake Corum now and everything. So, you know, it's really going to be an interesting matchup, offense versus defense right there. It's really going to be, for me, can our secondary hold out and, uh, you know, stop the abilities of Puka and Cooper Cup. I mean, yeah, that's that's a totally reasonable. I, I'll ask this. I, I, either one of you, I guess, can take this one. Uh, the Rams did announce that uh, running back one, Kyron Williams, will be uh, the punt returner. I know that the Rams fan base is totally uh, kind of split on this. I'm on the side of this is awesome because uh, Kyron Williams, I think, is electric. I think that the uh, the thought process of going to – you know, he's our punt returner. What if he gets hurt? I think is real pessimistic. <laughs> so I don't, mm -hmm. I don't really subscribe to that. What, what, how would you guys feel if uh, your RB1 was uh, put back as that punt returner? We've actually talked Jason. about that. That's yeah. actually come up before as far as like the new kickoff rule and the punt and yeah. everything. You want to get the ball in your best player's hands. And a lot of times, you know, your running back's one of those, you know, shifty electric guys that's going to be able to break one off. I don't have a problem with it. We also have a pretty good established, you know, running back A and B. I don't know mm -hmm. as far as the Rams go if they can really afford the same way. Um, you just mentioned Corum. Right, right. But we haven't seen him at all, right? So, I mean, we as Lions and Michigan fans obviously know what he's capable of. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And I guess I, you, guys, you guys have both mentioned a few names here, but my question is, and we'll go away. I actually want, would love an answer from, from each of you. Jason, who is the most underrated Lions offseason addition? That could be draft or free agency. I'm going to tell you that it's some, I think Carlton Davis is going to end up being, uh, he's not getting talked about nearly enough because we have Terry and Arnold. We have our number one draft pick on the other side. He has an electric personality. He's tearing up Twitter. Everyone's talking about him. <laughs> you know, it's just, everyone just not naturally gravitates toward him. Uh, Carlton Davis, we, we lacked a good man coverage, uh, cornerback last year. And mm -hmm. I think that he's he excels in that particular position. So I, for the Lions uh, fan base, that is one player that's just not getting talked about enough. And if he performs like a true number one corner, they will be talking about him. Um, and so that's for me. That's that's what I that's my answer. Yeah, hey, fair enough, Jacob. Uh, so I'm actually I'm going to go with Kevin Zeitler. So our offensive mm -hmm. line, you know, we we lost Jonah which was kind of a big loss for us. We really like the continuity. We like keeping the core guys together. That really helps the performance of the offensive line. But then we find a replacement in Zeitler that actually kind of came on a better contract and, you know, played a little bit better than Jonah did last year. Obviously, he's older. You know, time will tell as far as that's going to go. But I think that was kind of really under the radar that he was able to slot in right where Jonah left and just, you know, 
keep a you know the strong offensive line going. Hey, that I mean, there's a lot of pieces of that Detroit Lions uh, squad that is uh, daunting to look at, especially when you're uh, trying to go against them in Week One when we don't know how either of these squads are really going to look, especially early in the season. I fully anticipate that this Week One game with the Rams and the Lions. These will be two very different teams come postseason time, and hopefully we get this matchup not just once this season, but another rematch in the playoffs as well. Final question, where the heck do we listen to you? You can find us on Spotify. Find us on Apple Podcasts. Pretty much everywhere that there's podcasts, you can find us. We're on YouTube, too. Just audio only right now. Um, Jacob's too pretty for video, so we, uh, we're... we're you know, we're trying to keep the girls down. So we're, uh, you know, we're, we're just audio only right now. I'm getting distracted. Jason, by breaking cameras. Jersey, dude. That jersey's, yeah. it's, it's, it's awesome, man. I'm just, I'm just, Maybe <laughs> we'll see these against the Rams. Which one know. is that? Is that uh, Hutchinson? This is Hutch. Yep. Okay. I got you. I got you. I'll tell you this, man. Uh, Kirk uh, or Kurt Steele was on here. Uh, he had that same exact jersey, but in a school. <laughs> yeah. Right. So you guys hey, are love these. Big. I love that, man. Yeah. So, yeah. Hey, those jerseys Jason. are called Motor City Muscle. That's yeah, I what love that. Yeah, those yeah. helmets. That helmet. Yeah, yeah right, sick, right. Dude. So sick. Yeah. Hopefully we do see them, man. I wouldn't be bad. Yeah, right. That would be cool, man. <laughs> see that week one? Yeah. Hey, guys, Jason, Jacob, man, thank you so much for uh, taking some time and uh, chatting with me. Give us a little bit of that Lions perspective. Talking Grit podcast. Definitely go check it out. And, uh, hey, you can listen to my interview on there, if nothing else, but also dive into their other stuff. Man. Great, guys. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for having us. Definitely an awesome conversation with those two. Great guys, man. Super fun conversation. And uh, I also did an interview on their uh, channel, uh, their show. If you want to check that out as well, uh, I'll share all the links below uh, so you can check out uh, what they were asking me. A bit of the Rams perspective from the Lion, uh, for the Lions fans so you can uh, let them know if uh, if I missed something or if you need to add something to, <laughs> to that, uh, go ahead and do it up. But uh, that was not our only conversation. As we also talked with Kurt Steele, a man that I graduated college with, is absolutely awesome, man. Kurt Steele is an absolute boss. He does the Boss Up, Ball Out podcast, appropriately named as uh, Kurt Steele. One of the best human beings I've ever encountered, man. Absolutely love that I was able to connect with this guy. So we had an awesome conversation, and here it is. Yes, we have a Lions podcaster with us here. Uh Kind of digging into the enemy here a little bit. Uh, Kurt, first of all, man, what is up, dude? It's been too long. Man, it has been so long. We haven't talked. Um, we didn't get a chance to talk before the playoff game. I was on a family trip, man. I, I, we were, I was like, man, I got to talk to my man. And I just couldn't get it, you know, get, couldn't scale it together because I was, you know, traveling. So, but it's so good to talk to you, man. It's been a couple of years, man, but I'm so happy to be back on Ram Showcase. Dude, absolutely, man. It's good to ha have you back on. And maybe, like, speaking in retro retrospect here, maybe it was the best that I did have you on for that show. You know, <laughs> get a little bit, <laughs> a few more enemies out of that one, you know? That was yeah, a, yeah. That, that game bred some hate between our fan bases, man. That uh, kind of made it us, did. that game, that game alone, man, it made the Rams and Lions rivals. I was rather excited. Do you feel that on yeah. your guys' side as well? Hey, you know what? From the from the Lions fan base, man, I think it was needed because we had so many people ran Detroit Rams gear when they, you know, Stafford won a Super Bowl, and a lot of us Lions fans, we did not like that. We were like, hell. <laughs> so yeah. I think it was kind of, I don't think it was kind of needed to kind of like because you know competition breeds rivalries, and you know, I think it's a healthy competition uh, between the players. You know, there's no you know disrespect or no love loss. Yeah. Um, I think it was kind of, I think it was kind of bred even before that it was starting in that when we visited you guys in 2021 and, uh, excuse me, 2020, uh, yeah, 2021 when, uh, my man, Penny Sue was not backing down from Aaron Donald. He was like, hell no, man, get out of my face. <laughs> so love to uh, see it, man. That's yeah, it, it's, fun. it's one of those things, man, but I love the competition. Uh, I don't think we really hate the Rams. I don't, I don't think that I just think it, it was the whole. Uh, coming back in the forward field for Matthew Stafford, we were going to give him the most hostile environment possible. We're not going to let the guy, the prodigal son, come in, coming back into our house and, and and get a and get a game and stop our journey on the playoffs. So, hey, that's um, totally fair, man. Yeah. So, um, but you know, a lot of us Lions fans still have love for Matthew Stafford. You know, what I'm saying we're just not going to root for him anymore. Who the fool me, dude? All those booze raining <laughs> yeah, down. Yeah, for oh real. Um, 
But I will say this, man. I still have some nine jerseys hanging up in my closet. I'm not going to break them out. Yeah. Just because of the fact my quarterback is number 16 now. No. I will, I'll say this, man, because you say you don't hate the, the Rams. I'll say I don't hate the Lions. But if we did a poll of Rams fans, I'm th- I'm thinking 75 to 80 percent say they hate the Lions right now, man. I think oh, it was good I, on that game, which means this game going into week one, man, that is the best timing for it. I said all offseason, I was like, I want that game week one Sunday night football. And we got it, dude, which is yeah, crazy to me. Yeah, it's going to be so, good. We're going into this game, obviously. Mm-hmm. We, we This was our most recent – our most recent game, not your most recent. Right. But it was our most recent game coming into this mm-hmm. one. But it's a new season, man. That game doesn't mean anything anymore. You can throw that one out, man. It's over. It doesn't matter. There's nothing we can change about it. You know about, what? Because so, nobody won the Super Bowl. We didn't win it. You guys didn't win it. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, man. So, there's also been some changes, man. So, I wanted to ask from, like, from the Lions' perspective here because I mm-hmm. – we. We'd actually brought it up in a text thread, and this is where I wanted to uh, – like, I stopped responding because I was like, this is actually good content, man. It's like we can't right. <laughs> have this conversation in text. This is good stuff. So that we're both kind of overlooking each other. Like, Rams fans are looking so. at the Lions thinking like, oh, we should win this game, while the Lions fans are thinking the same way, man. So yeah. what, what, is, what, what is it about the Rams that you're thinking like, oh, yeah, no, this is cake. We got this. I think for us, we're looking at what we have versus some of the – some of the turnover and some of the the issues, the early issues. I think it would have been a closer. I think it, Lions fans will probably think it would be a closer matchup if you guys didn't have the issues that you're having right now on your, like I say, your offensive line, and then all the turnover on your defensive line. Where we're kind of bringing back as far on offense, we only have one new starter, and that's Kevin Zeitler. All the rest mm-hmm. of the guys, you know, have started or play had integral parts in the offense last season so and then you look at the defensive side of the ball we have a brand new secondary so that's one mm-hmm. thing we you know we want to improve that but as far as how our front sevens been, I played last year second in the second in the league in run defense so we're looking at we're going to continue that and then we added a big behemoth of a man called dj reader uh to go with already stout guy like a uh, lean mcneil and of course we're talking about hutch man who would definitely wreak havoc all over adding a guy like Marcus Davenport, man. We we're confident in what we have and we're we're looking at the matchup. Like we should, we match up good with these guys. Um, but they have some holes so that we can exploit. Now you guys have some things that you can exploit on us as well. And that's probably what you guys are thinking. Like you guys are like, Hey man, we, we played these guys and we weren't our best and we played them within one point in the playoff game. So it's, it's one of those things. From the Rams' perspective, we feel like we left points off the board and we didn't play our best football game and lost by one. So, uh, so I, real fast, is uh, Zeitler, that was um, your only new starter. Um, is, that's replacing Jonah Jackson, correct? Well, n- not actually really, like, because Jonah Jackson played left guard. Mm-hmm. Kevin Zeitler plays right guard, and what it did was it shifted our, our, uh, our right guard to left guard, which he can play okay. anywhere, which is Graham Glasgow. He 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 plays both guard positions and center, so yeah. he's our backup I mean, center. So so he can play chip, anywhere. That's a chip off the Rams block. Brad Holmes yeah. doing some stuff, man. That's what, yeah, that's what so, the Rams do as well. And, and he was a former former line who left and went to Denver for a couple of years and came mm-hmm. back and revitalized his career in Detroit yep. and playing with you know Frank Rag now, who's one of the best centers in the league. Playing with quote unquote probably one of the best right tackles in the league i think he's the best right tackle and he's he's rivaling uh trent wings for best tackle in the league is penny sewell man penny sewell mm-hmm. is is the heartbeat of the offensive line frank ragnow is the engine that runs it because he's the captain and he gets everybody lined yeah. up but as far as being the heart and soul of that offensive line and being that voice that 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 motivating factor it's penny sewell because he's just nasty yeah, no, man. So- I, I guess, like from the from the, the Lions' perspective, there, you kind of talk about that offense a little bit, man. What is somebody mm-hmm. that the Rams fans? What is a who is a player the Rams fans are not thinking about in this game that you think will have a big performance as far as like an underrated guy on that Lions offense? Man, I'm gonna say a name that most Lions fans are gonna be like, huh? But Rams fans are gonna be like, oh no! If this guy has a good game and it's our second string tight end, Brock Wright. Now, he is the best blocking tight end on the roster, but he's sneaky good in the passing game. 
and Ben Johnson uses him in multiple formations where you think he's going to be blocking it. And then, oh, snap, <laughs> he's down the field open for a touchdown or making a big play. I know McVay does some of those similar things with some of his personnel where you look, you think it's one uh, a set where it's a maybe a run set. And next thing you know, it's a pass play. Ben Johnson's kind of that same type of creative play caller way. You know, he just puts personnel on the field and all of a sudden it's something different. Like we'd had a play against the Rams and uh, I mean, excuse me, get the Chargers last year uh, when we visited uh, the that uh, SoFi Stadium where Brock Wright just snuck down the middle of the field for a touchdown and everybody thought it was a run play. So, you know, yeah, he's a guy, he's he's sneaky good. He's He has uh, deceptive speed and he's healthy and He's a big part of the offense when he's when he's uh, healthy in, in the in the lineup. Not as big as Laporta because Laporta is what well, you said I underrated. Yeah, yeah. So so Brock yeah, Wright is definitely. he's an underrated piece for that offense. What about on the defensive side, man? Other side of the ball, an under underrated guy that Rams fans aren't thinking about that could wreck this game. Now, the underrated guy plays opposite of Aiden Hudson. And that's defensive end Marcus Davenport. Hasn't played a lot in the last few seasons because he's been hurt. But when he's fully healthy, he's a big presence on that defensive line. And he will definitely cause havoc. He has one of the best bull rushes in the NFL. Like I said, he's been hurt for the last couple of years. His best years came when he played uh, in New Orleans with who? Dan Campbell and uh, Aaron Glenn, who are now our head coach and our defensive coordinator. So the, his best years were with those guys in New Orleans, and they're looking to unlock that potential once again in Detroit. Fair enough, man. So I guess kind of the flip side there is uh, the the Lions fans who are maybe looking at this matchup here. And I know that there's some confidence being, you know, like we talked about on both sides here. But is there anybody that in particular that on, on offense and defense that Lions fans are kind of looking on the Rams roster saying like, oh, this guy might be a problem, man. So are, are there man, those guys? You already know who it is. It is Puka Nakua, man. I think that dude is still in the end zone. He was ran all over Ford Field last time he was here uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the playoff game, man. He he is a definitely uh, a monster, and he is a freak of nature, tough to cover, tough to bring down, great rock runner, you know, for, especially to be a young player that he is. So that's the guy, and he's he makes it a point to be professional, and he goes – he went into the season – where he's with Matthew Stafford, he's with Cooper Cup. He's making sure that he's in there learning. And that, for me, is a great thing to see that young player do that. But he is a matchup nightmare for any secondary, especially sure. the Lions who have a secondary. Uh, like we spoke on my show uh, a little while ago, we we're talking about guys who um, haven't played together, and that's the Lions secondary. Absolutely, man. So on defense, is there like somebody that Goff might be, you know, staring down that you think could be a, a bit of a game record? It's a very new look defense for the Rams. A lot of uh, different guys, uh, you know, new defensive coordinator and no captains mm -hmm. from last year returning. So is there th those guys sticking out to you? Anybody? It was Jared Burst, man. Definitely. That young guy, mm -hmm. long, lean defensive end, can get after the quarterback. Uh, now he'll be matched up against our veteran left tackle, and this is Taylor Decker. Decker is still a good player. He's older. He's lost a step here and there, but he's made up for it with uh, for the diminished physical gifts by focusing on technique and having that young player um, verse. It's going to be a test for him coming into week one because he does have a problem sometimes with some of those guys that are long and got a good bend. So we're going to see a, a, that's a good matchup for him. And that's one of the focal points uh, during his media session the other day was his matchup against, against verse uh, in week one. Did you? Uh, do I need to send you some uh, footage of the Lions, or excuse me, the uh, Cowboys and Rams joint practices and what Jared Verse was doing to those guys? Nah, nah, we're good, man. <laughs> yeah, I, I hate the Cowboys. I, I don't need to see. I don't, see, I don't see, need to see none of them. No, he way. was hurt. <laughs> Jared Verse was out there hurting feelings, man. He was out yeah, there getting, yeah. getting guys cut. It, it, you was, know what? It, you just go back to his Florida State days, man. He was a good guy, man. He was yeah. a very talented well, young not, defensive end. I'm not saying that Jared Verse and Braden Fisk were the reason that Florida State was good last year, but they're not this year, okay? <laughs> yeah, they're definitely not this year. <laughs> what would you do without those guys and can't stop the run? I like to think that that'll happen for us now, and that'll be pretty cool. Yeah. But um, so on the Lions side there, man, uh, so obviously you know, we, we know how it went last year. Going into that game, football gods were not going to let the Detroit Lions lose that football game, and I firmly believe that. 
as much as I wanted the Rams to win that game, like I want the Rams to win every football game, football guys were like, nah, man, they got this one. Like, that's kind of how it felt. But coming into this year, man, is there anybody or any kind of groupings that you would break, you would just like a, like a breakout as far as on the Lions side? We know the stars, man. Like, we know those big names. I know you mentioned a few names there, uh, but is there anybody else that we kind of think about as, like, uh, as potential just breakout break, performer? Breakout performer that's coming hit your way, and you're going to see him week one is going to be Jamison Williams. Former first round pick out of Alabama in 2022 he had an ACL injury, so he I missed most of his rookie season. But one thing that you can see about Jamison Williams or JMO, like we call him in, in Detroit, is that he's become a professional this offseason. Working working tirelessly on his craft. He's improved his route running and catching techniques. Uh he made those focal points in his uh for preparation this offseason. Because in college, man, the guy was just so fast. He was just faster than everyone. And he just relied on his natural ability uh, in college because guys just couldn't run with him. And it's just like you get in the NFL, everyone's physically gifted. Now, they may not be as fast as him, but they're physically gifted and they can, you know, make it make life hard for him. And, you know, saying in the passing game. So, you know, you know, fit strong physical corners that can, you know, buff him off his routes. So what he's did this offseason, man, he definitely worked on his route running, definitely working with Jared Goff on his on his catching ability. and. I think he will utilize that speed and, and, and technique to terrorize secondaries uh, this offseason, man. Our joint practices we had with the New York Giants, man, he was just torturing those guys. One, he was just so, so wide open, man. He waved bye-bye to the guy on the way into the end zone. <laughs> and that kid huh. is ridiculously fast. Um, I, I He juked one of our best corners in practice one day, and the guy, like, he was just standing still. I was like, oh, my God. This, I was like, can you, can you, you see the maturation process of this young mm-hmm. fella with the speed he has. He said he would have, he said he, if he would have been able to run the combine at 40, he said he'd have been, he'd have been uh, probably flirting with a 4 1. Hey, that'd be pretty, pretty exciting to see, man. I, I'd love to see yeah. that. Man. He's, a, he's a definitely, he's a 4 2 guy. And he I said mean, if he was healthy coming into the combine, he would have been a 4 1 guy. Hey, you mean, man man that's that cool. that kid's that kid's he can fly and he's healthy now finally he's fully healthy he's stronger he's put on about 12 pounds of muscle he's ready to go man and to see to see him become more professional and mm-hmm. you know we got st brown there who our technician who's who's the uh, and and jared goff said this when he came in when he first got to the lions he said that this guy is going to be my cooper cup on this team the st brown but st brown is a technician kind of like mm-hmm. Cooper Cup where he's more technically sound, but he's JMO is, inter, inter, um, is taking some of that game from St. Brown and putting it in his game. So you have a technical guy who's fast, man, that's going to be a nightmare. I love it, man. We Either way, <laughs> man, we got a great matchup week one. The way that that playoff game went, man, wild card at Stafford Field uh, last <laughs> last year, going back in at week one, man, getting, getting this game right away, I think is exactly what I wanted. I wanted Detroit right away now i wanted detroit immediately after that game it was like let's go again man like it's like because i feel like we're better than that you know so i'm excited for it man we got a, a hell of a matchup both of our teams looking at like uh looking like this could be a nfc championship preview game man so uh both squads looking looking real strong right now so uh, i'm not gonna do score predictions dude i think the rams are gonna win you think the Lions are gonna win right yep of course. Yeah, exactly so what, 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 what gives man we don't need to <laughs> We don't know single score predictions, man. And, and yeah. I would say this, man. And, and I, I told my fan base this, and and I've always mentioned you uh, when it came when it came to Jared Goff. You were like, be patient with this guy because yeah. Jared Goff's a winner. He's he's stronger than what you think he is. He's more durable, and he's a guy who's mentally tough. And I just think that the difference between Jared Goff in L.A. and the difference between Jared Goff in Detroit is that he has command of the offense here in Detroit. Like, this is his offense. Ben Johnson's trusted him. He checks, you know, checking the line. You know, everything runs through Jared Goff, and he has this offense humming. And I just don't think he had that. You know, I don't think Sean McVay trusted him like that. You're absolutely right. Did you hear what uh, Aaron Donald said about Jared Goff? What is that? No, what did he He say? He said that Jared Goff is that guy. He always has been that guy. But the Rams were ready to win right now and weren't willing to wait for Jared Goff to get that last little bit of progression that he needed to become mm-hmm. that quarterback. 
So yeah. the trade, I think, again, I've said it until I'm blue in the face, dude. I've said it a billion times. Nope. Both teams won. Matthew Stafford comes over, he gets his ring, and Detroit is the perfect spot for Jared Goff, man. So I think that both teams yeah. won. We needed to we needed to change it in 2021. Jared Goff was not going to win us a Super Bowl in 2021. Maybe he would have this year or last year or something like that, but he wasn't that guy yet, and we had the team to do it that year. It was in SoFi Stadium for the Super Bowl. That was the year we went for it. So it seemed to work out. We got a hell of a matchup week one. Kurt, where the hell can we find you online, dude? Definitely, you can find me at the Boss Up Ball Out Podcast on YouTube. You can find me at Curtis Steel 14 on X, uh, at Curtis Steel 14 on Facebook uh, with my page over there. Or you can just go to KurtSteel.com. You can find me right there, man. That's my that's my website. You can find me and all my content right there on the homepage. That's perfect, man. I'm doing uh, We're doing a, a Ram Showcase live on Monday nights uh, once the season begins, man. You're more than, uh, we're more than welcome to hop on in on uh, on Monday night after uh, after the game, see how it goes. And I'm saying that before this game's even happened, so we don't even know the outcome yet, and I'm already inviting you, dude. All right? <laughs> I appreciate that. Thanks, thanks for having me on, man. It is always a joy to come on Ram Showcase, man. Dude, Great show. Thank you so much, man. You're the man. Thanks, man. Always awesome to hear from the opponent. Jason and Jacob were absolutely incredible. Uh, Kurt as well. Thank you guys for uh, hopping on Ram Showcase. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to get uh, some more chats going uh, when we uh, preview the uh, NFC Championship game. Rams and, uh, and Lions. How's that sound, huh? This time, though, uh, let's get into our fan quesos. Uh, we're a little bit light this week, but I do have a few that we wanted to carry over from last week. And I also had a string that were uh, commented. I think it was paul who commented on the show and i kind of want to address those ones as well so we'll kind of go back in time and uh check those out uh from last week and if they're still relevant we will definitely answer them if they're not i'm gonna make fun of you publicly so that's fun uh let's go ahead and start over at the facebook page these quesos coming from ed win emphasis on the win on uh on those so uh hey finally made it back to week one you're damn right edwin we're here man we are here uh, says, uh, thank you for what you do, man. I look forward to uh, your videos every week. Thank you, man. I appreciate you, man. Uh, we are, by the way, Edwin, I know that you are a regular on our Ram Showcase Live. Um, that is coming back starting Mondays. So get that rolling, man. We also, there's a chance we push them to Tuesdays um, because of uh, just the NFL schedule. And I like to watch football. So <laughs> I'd like to watch, you know what I mean? Let's get into Edwin's questions here, though. One I personally do not like those bone jerseys, Edwin. I just said emphasis on the win. I just said all this cool stuff about you, dude. <laughs> well, let's see here. I, I know you do. You have it. You have it. Uh, but, there is a, uh, but is there a certain color that you would absolutely hate if the Rams came out with? I mean, no. I'll, I'll be honest, man. Uh, I say no because... Um, and, and I love the bone because of the uniqueness. I like uniqueness i'm wearing a bone shirt right now um the bone color i think is absolutely incredible the way it pops with the helmets too man what game was i watching uh, the other day i had uh it was a uh, bucks rams 2020 i was watching that uh earlier this week and uh that one man that was like seeing the the jersey with the helmets it just pops so much dude i absolutely love the bone color i think it's so unique i think it's uh you know something that no other team can do or does i always kind of like that if if you're the only one doing it, I think it's pretty cool. That's typically how I go, except for those uh, stupid Packers white helmets. Why is there no yellow on them? Come on. It feels like they're missing something. But um, yeah, so I it, no, the Rams couldn't come out with anything that I'd absolutely hate. Uh, the logo, when we got that, it was kind of like, okay, it's not my favorite that we've ever had, but it's the Rams logo. So I'll rock the hell out of it, man. That's kind of how I've always felt about it. And not to say that like, Rams can do no wrong or we shouldn't care about this stuff or whatever. Cause yeah, I mean, it's part of it. The aesthetics are part of it, but, um, I think that, uh, the colors and the uniforms right now are super flashy and awesome. I think it's great. Uh, the gradient numbers could, I could do without, but you know, whatever, not that big of a deal. I still buy the jerseys. I still got a bunch of them sitting in my closet right here. I still rock the new logo. I still rock the old logo though. All relay Rams logo. I'm an equal opportunity Rams logo lover on this podcast. Uh, we're here for love, by the way, man. I'm not trashing anything this year. I've, I've, I've this is a new era, and I'm not. I, the, we're here to support the Rams and all that they do. All right, so that's kind of what I'm here for, man. 
And uh, so, yeah, they could give us whatever. I'm, I'm just going to rock it. I'll buy jerseys. I'll whatever. Oh, they could just come out with the practice jerseys. I'll rock that. I don't care. Good stuff. Second one here from Edwin. Is there a better or is it a certain beer uh, you drink uh, that you like to have while you're watching the Rams? Personally, I love my Coronas. Uh, Coronas aren't bad, dude. Um, Modelo is obviously a go-to. Um, I was big on Fat Tire, dude, because that's the dumbest joke ever. Because there's a there was a little thing on there that was like established Colorado 1991. And one time I was drinking at home and I was just like, I looked at the bottle I'm by myself. And I read that and it said established Colorado 1991. And I out loud said, no way, me too. And then laughed for like 10 minutes by myself. And then that was my favorite beer because also it was delicious. So then they changed their formula and all that stuff. And, and it's kind of it's whatever. Anymore. I don't really drink it anymore. But as far as uh, specific beers go, if we are at uh, my buddy's house, uh, we go with the uh, the Shiner Bach because it's got the Ram head on the on the cap. And there's a Ram on the bottle. So it's like, yeah, obviously. I don't even care if it's good or not, dude. Just give me that Rams Rams beer, dude. And then um, if I'm at the uh, the bar that I go to in uh, in Colorado Springs here, I, I usually just uh, have Pacificos. I was doing, uh, like I said, the uh, fat tires and all that. I actually went to Pacifico specifically, Yellow Label. That was literally why, and it's also a good beer, so whatever. It's a fine beer, I'll say that. <laughs> it does the job, is uh, what I need the beers to do. Corona's though, yeah, it's a good call, man. Or, uh, they do mini pitchers, but I just drink them, I just drink the beer right out of that, like a barbarian. Um, so I just stopped doing that. I do the bottles now. <laughs> uh, last one here, coming from Edwin. Uh, how many sacks do you think our defense gets this Sunday night? And who has the biggest impact in our offense? How many sacks do I think the Rams get? That's a tough one, dude. We have a very young grouping uh, rushing the, the quarterback. And the Lions do have a really good um, uh, uh, offensive line. I do think that there's one underrated thing that I think a lot of the teams are going to kind of start doing to uh, against the Rams this year, which is um, not not trying to get rid of the ball so, so fast because there's no Aaron Donald. I do think that is something to kind of keep our eyeballs on a little bit. Um, as far as, uh, as, as far as that goes, uh, is like of the game planning I'm saying. So, so I do think that that is something to watch, but as far as sacks, I think the Rams can get three. Let's, let's say that I like to feel like more, but, um, I, I, that was, we'll just go with three. I think that verse gets one. We'll say young gets one and give me my, give me one for my boy Kobe. All right. And, uh, biggest o- impact on offense it's Cooper Cup. Uh, I don't, like, I get it. I get it. I totally get it. I was going to say I don't get it, but I totally get it of why everybody is, like, all over Puka Nakua right now. Fantasy-wise, he's ranked higher. Everybody's just hopping on the Puka train like crazy. Uh, but I think that Cooper Cup coming into this year healthy is so underrated, man. I think that that is going to be huge, and I'm very excited about Cooper Cup this year, man. That Matthew Stafford Cup connection, I think, is uh, closer to the 2021 season this year than we've seen any other outside of the 2021 20, season, of course, which was uh, the madness, man. The Cooper Cup unstoppable that year, which uh, obviously you love to see it. Uh, next one here coming from uh, this one. I, I'm so confused by this YouTube channel, man. Um, you feel free to explain yourself, okay? Because <laughs> uh, the name is literally Patrick Mahomes, and it's a picture of Patrick Mahomes, but I think he says he's a Rams fan. I mean, hey, we are we love everybody here, dude. Welcome in. Uh, it says, uh, do you see Cooper Cup making the Hall of Fame? I do think he is on pace for a Hall of Fame. Uh, and, and some people might be like, yeah, Cup, you, no way, dude. Because we're thinking of like, you know, comparing Cooper Cup to Jerry Rice and, you know, Randy Moss and, and, and Larry Fitzgerald, maybe like these guys. But yeah, he's numbers wise, man. He's absolutely on pace. And if he keeps up decently um because like we already know he's first in franchise history and you know receptions for the postseason all that stuff he's just behind isaac bruce uh tory holt and uh there's like there's a i think there was one that was flipper uh, there's got to be an elroy i'm sure in there but either way he's like fourth in like every major category and has more of an impact than a lot of guys like that wording didn't make sense I think that overall he is at the level of uh, being a Hall of Famer. I don't know if first ballot is an option, but you tag a triple crown Super Bowl MVP season onto your career, man, and that helps a lot. It absolutely does. 
Uh, these next three here are going to come from Bill. These ones coming from uh, last week's uh, episode uh, that I typed in here, or that I, you, you get it. <laughs> do you see the Rams making a trade before the regular season starts? I do not see the Rams making a trade before the regular season starts. I think it's this, this roster now, as of Wednesday, is about what we'll see um, come uh, come Sunday Night Football. Next one here from Bill. If uh, you could go into a time machine and be a former Rams player, who would it be? Dude, what a question, man. I wasn't ready for that. That's so sick. If I go back in time, though, and be a former Rams player, man, oh, my gosh, that's tough. That is a tough one. There's so many that I would like to be. <laughs> you know what, man? Give me Mike Lansford's career, dude. Put me in Mike Lansford's you know, career, and I think that that's kind of like ideal. You're so respected amongst the uh, the fan base. Super cool, down to earth dude. Even today, you know, like I, that's just super cool, man. Yeah, and I mean, he held the record for most points in uh, Rams history in, for for so so long until Jeff Wilkins popped up uh, in uh, St. Louis. Uh, last one here from Bill: If Donald and Kurt Warner were running for president, who would you vote for? Aaron Donald, man. Um, definitely Aaron Donald. Because you pull up to, you know, I don't know anything about politics, so I'm going to sound like an idiot here for a second. You pull up to China. <laughs> can can Air Force One carry Air Donald? I don't know. Um, I, I, dude, that's a that's a weird one. Um, yeah, I go Aaron Donald, though, man. Maybe uh, I go, I want Donald and, and, be, and give me Michael Brockers as his running mate. I think that'd be cool. <laughs> That's my analysis. Would be cool. Confirmed. Cool. <laughs> All right. Let's head over to uh, the YouTube channel here uh, for our quesos. He will wrap it up on this. Uh, so Rams House says, uh, who scores the first TD this week on the Rams? I think I've answered this question uh, before, and I don't remember what I said. So this might be a different answer than I give you now. Uh, but give me Kyron Williams, man. I think the Rams get uh, they they move the ball down, get close enough, and then Kyron Williams is gonna gonna scamper one in from about seven or eight out. Uh, he's gonna go up the middle, probably hit the a gap, you know, maybe but hit that a gap right between Jonah and Steve and uh, punch it in uh, to t- he's gonna he's gonna shake somebody too, man. It kind of make him look a little bit silly, but he's gonna score on that first pick. Uh, next one here for Rams House. What's the most underrated part of this Rams team? Ooh, that's a good question, man. Um, I will say, though, I'll stick with my tight ends, man. I like this tight end group a lot. It is not the most talented, and there's other teams that have better tight ends on them. But we have the deepest tight end group in the NFL, and I'll fight you on that. All right? Um, I think that this group is pretty underrated. Um, of course, we got to see it kind of happen. Uh, Coley Parkinson, we don't really know what he's going to bring. But Tyler Higby, best tight end in Rams history, man. So, I mean, once we get him back, uh, obviously he's got a really good connection with Matthew Stafford. So, um, I mean, all systems go when once uh, Big Rig is back. But I still like these guys. Davis Allen was coming on really strong last year as well. Um, and Hunter Long, we kind of feel at least decent about him as a depth piece. Um, but I, if we needed to have him start for a game or two, I wouldn't be... I wouldn't be sitting here like, we got to figure this out. Like, I feel okay about that even. So uh, so I think the tight end grouping is extremely underrated, but I think the running backs are underrated. I think that the secondary is underrated. I think our defensive line is underrated, and I think our linebackers are underrated. I think there's a lot of underrating going on for the Rams, or maybe I'm overvaluating, uh, overrating everything. That's possible. We'll see. Uh, next one here come from Paul. Uh, if, or excuse me, what do you think of the Rams' new kicker? Don't really know yet, man. I, we've only seen him in preseason. Uh, we know that he looks more comfortable than a lot of the guys that we've had since uh, probably Jeezy days. Um, so, I mean, I should probably put that jersey up, huh? Ed, I, that's for Edwin. I need to put that jersey up for Edwin just so he knows that when I die, <laughs> he gets that. I'm going to put it in my will. Uh, my Greg Zerline jersey from Super Bowl Media Day. Um, but yeah, I, th- I mean, we'll see. I mean... I think that Rams fans are a little bit um, cautious when it comes to kickers right now, but I like the kid. I think he's a good kicker, so um, we'll kind of see it. We'll see how it unfolds. That's I know that that's a crummy answer, but uh, but that's really what I got for you right now. Alternate universe. This question comes from Rams House. 
Uh, how would you see the next four years playing out uh, for the Rams if Jared Goff never got traded? So 2021 to present. Ooh, really good question, man. I will say this. I feel decently confident in saying this as well. I think that if that trade does not happen and the Rams stuck with Jared Goff, they do not have a Super Bowl ring in Los Angeles. Simply put, I think that the Rams needed Matthew Stafford to get that ring. I don't think Jared Goff had it in him, especially that year. I think that maybe today he's got it in him. So you take a, a today Jared Goff and put him on the 2021 Rams, and I think you've got something there. But at the time, I just don't think he was ready for it. So, um, yeah, I think that that's ultimately it, is that the Rams are still a good team, but probably just getting booted in the playoffs. Um, I, I think that's... I. I don't know, man. I, I don't know if I see Jared Goff as a Super Bowl championship quarterback. I, I don't know yet. And and maybe that's going to, this is going to be clipped out in February, make me look like an idiot, but I, I don't know if I see it, man. I, I think he's very, very good. Very, very good quarterback. And he's not going to ruin it for you, but I do think he needs the team to get him there and to, to win it for him. Hopefully, I'm just trying not to trash the lines. All right. That's not my intention. <laughs> but also, who cares? You're probably not Lions fans, right? <laughs> Uh, next one here coming from Payo Time. Am I the only one who has noticed a trend, mainly on Facebook, of Rams fan groups? Don't even get me started on Rams fan Facebook groups, dude. A disaster of a location to be <laughs> ever. I'm in like a couple now. I was in like 26. Had to stop that, dude. I started hating Rams fans. <laughs> Those Facebook groups are, that's where fandom goes to die, man. A uh, good fandom goes to die. Um, but uh, let's see. Uh, the unofficial. Posting in the Rams fan groups, posting unofficial Rams merch. Some really cool, but it's always posted by attractive women. Uh, what do you think these of these sales tactics, and do you buy uh, much unofficial or fan-made Rams merchandise? Really good question, man, because, yeah, those are definitely out there. I always kind of just assume that they're actually scams, um, so I don't reach out to them or interact with those pages whatsoever if it's just some random chick in a bikini and she's like you like rams jerseys i'm like get nice try dude get out of here um so i don't know but um i I tend to stick with the official stuff uh like you asked here rams like fan made merchandise i have bought stuff that fans have made um like obviously i mean this is fan made this is fan made like i've got a lot of stuff that is fan made over here but um, as far as like fan made logos, that one with the Ram head and the LA, I think looks terrible. I just don't really like it. I think it's kind of corny. I, it's not official. And I think that that's big part of my emotions on it is like, give me official logos. I don't need your fancy doctored up stuff to make you feel cool. You're like, Hey, look at how much cooler I made this logo. It's like, you just put them both together. That's not, no, that's, a, <laughs> that's not how it is, man. So, I mean, as far as like fan made stuff here, man, I um, like my decals obviously are made by a Rams fan. Um, I'm getting that shipping in hopefully soon, uh, and start dispersing those bad boys out. But, um, no, I, I prefer to go official, officially licensed stuff. I, I don't tend to go with, um, the, the fan made stuff. But yeah, that's a, that is a weird one, man. Um, I don't know. Stick to what you trust. That's what I'll say. Let's say, uh, next one here from Payo time. If you were to give a title to this Rams season, what would you title it? I do something like 2024 Rams, the Sheriff, the Bandits, and the Beef Uglies. Who are the Bandits and who are the Beef Uglies, man? I got I got questions for you, Payo Time. Um, before the season starts, I'm not sure yet. I think uh, by week I would have an answer for this, hopefully. Um, but it kind of seems like that's uh, you kind of get that later in the year. Um, what I've been kind of hammering is what Sean McVay was saying, uh, part of the uh, Ernest Jones trade which was the whole, um, this is about the 2024 Los Angeles Rams. And I've kind of been, I, when, when he was saying that and the way that he was saying it, I was kind of like, all right, I, I kind of like that actually. The 2024 Los Angeles Rams. Because a lot of people are kind of throwing this team out, especially with Donald Lee and stuff like that. And, and then you like Jordan Fuller's in Carolina, Ernest Jones is now in Tennessee. So we lose all three of our captains from last year. And it's just a new era where I think people are kind of like, what is this defense going to look like? And Sean McVay is like, no, we're still good. Like this is the 2024 Los Angeles Rams that we're on to this year. And so I've been kind of hammering just that, that part alone, but hard to answer that uh, ahead of the season. We don't really know the vibe of this team yet. We at least got to see some starters out. You know what I mean? 
Uh, next one from Ram's House. What would it be like sharing a room with the land shark? Dude, that would be so much fun, man. We kept yelling out land shark in Denver last year to him. That was really fun. But uh, I got him to sign my flag. I think I have a picture of him signing my flag. Um, my buddy Aaron, his wife Misty, she nails doing pictures. I'm so bad at pictures. Like, I'm going to Creed on Saturday. Probably not going to pull out my phone one time. And then going to be mad about it. Be like, damn, I didn't even take a picture for this. Dang. And yeah, I'm going to Creed. It's going to be awesome. I'm so pumped. <laughs> or tuck in my, my a band tee to fit in with all the other dads, you know? Uh, it's going to be fun. But uh, Land Shark, man, I think that we would have, uh, we'd, it, he'd probably get me back into video games. I think that he could be the one that does it. I haven't played video games in years, uh, but I feel like Land Shark would be the one of like, be like, yeah, I wouldn't want to play either because you're probably just going to lose. And then it'd be like, all right. <laughs> and uh, he'd probably be right. I'd probably lose because I'm not good at video games. So. Um, but yeah, we'd be jamming out, dude. We'd probably have uh, a lot of joke stuff, a lot of games, I think. Probably playing cards a little bit, playing some uh, some video games, stuff like that. And just kind of jamming out, dude. Have some music. I'd probably try to do... I'd, I would be the one to try to convince him to do like freestyle battles. And then obviously he would just smoke me at that probably. I don't even know if he's good at that or not, but I know that I'm bad. And that's all I need to know. That's as much information. That's it. All the information I need to know that it probably won't go well for me, but I'll still have a blast, dude. Still have a blast doing it. And uh, last one here, coming from Rams House. Not a question. All right. Uh, a simple reminder to Rams fans to enjoy this era of Rams football. It can go so fast, and we'll be disappointed if we forget to stop and appreciate it. We, we're truly in a golden era of football. Dude, I love that that ended up being... I didn't plan that to be the last one uh, that we address here, but you're absolutely right, man. And I love this. Um, I had a feature that I put out a few years ago called um, The Good Old Days. And it was kind of about this exact topic of looking back on, you know, the greatest show on turf, which lasted, what, three years? I mean, it's it's one of those things, man, where uh, sometimes they go real quick on you and you end up talking about it in the past tense before you even realize that it ended and sometimes you you're you're already looking back on it realizing like like sometimes it snaps you a little bit and you're kind of like oh it's it's over like the Aaron Donald era it's it's over now hopefully we enjoyed it you know like hopefully you had those moments where you're like we are watching greatness hopefully you did I did. I definitely did that, man. I'm big into that. And like I said, I did a whole feature on it called The Good Old Days, which was, I mean, that was Goff, Cup, Gurley, and like a lot of those guys were mentioned in that video. But I mean, the point stands that Rams House brings up here. We are in a golden era of football, especially as Rams fans. We know that this could go away at any moment and you don't know when your last playoff game or like when you're going to go to the playoffs again. When the Rams lost to the Atlanta Falcons, in uh, the playoffs after beating the Seahawks was at 05. We didn't know that that was going to be the last St. Louis Rams playoff game. How would we? That was 2005. And we were still a decent football team. We were in the playoffs. We just swept the Seahawks uh, and beat them in the playoffs. So we were 3-0 and against Seattle that year. We ran into the buzzsaw of the Atlanta Falcons, which was the Michael Vick, uh, Warwick Dunn, and uh, Duckett, TJ Duckett rushing attack which the Rams just really had no answer for I think it was 47 to 17 if I'm not mistaken and that game was played in St. Louis and I believe it was St. Louis and who knew who knew that that was going to be the last one until Los Angeles the last St. Louis Rams playoff game in 2005 then we come back uh and and we got to to get to uh, to see the Atlanta Falcons again uh, lost that one in the first playoff appearance uh, back in Los Angeles, uh, the 2017 Rams, McVay's first year. Uh, that was a Saturday, I remember, because I had to leave work early, and they didn't like that, but I didn't care. <laughs> uh, but yeah, man, like you don't know. You don't know if uh, if maybe that loss to the Lions is the last time that McVay's in a playoff game. What if it is? You know what I mean? Like We just got to enjoy it while we've got it, man. So I absolutely love you bringing that up, man, and I absolutely, I wholeheartedly agree. Wholeheartedly agree that uh, it's it's worth it right now to take a peek at this team and be like, man, this is it, man. Like we're looking pretty good. We know it's hard to find a quarterback. It's so hard to find a quarterback. It's hard to find a coach. We know that. So I mean, yeah, you're absolutely right, man. And I I hope that Rams fans do take that. Uh, hopefully they're doing it already. And hopefully if not, then you take this as a warning of like, hey, it's gonna be bad again someday. 
And we're going to look back and be like, damn, though, remember when Puka Nakua was going into year two and he was crushing everybody's lives? And we're like, yeah, dude, soul crusher Puka Nakua out here, man. And then Kobe Turner, we'd be like, dude, we remember Kobe Turner. He was Wake Forest. He was a, you know, middle mid-round pick. We didn't know what he was going to be. Now he's a Hall of Famer. Like, that could happen, man. So, yeah, it's, uh, soak it in, man, while you got it. And uh, I always kind of just try to live in the moment. I'm, I'm big into that of just... Uh, you know, we ain't got to worry about next year. Like, people are asked, like, what about when Stafford leaves? He's not gone yet, though, and we have him this year. So let's just enjoy it while we've got him. We can worry about replacing him when he decides to go, you know? That's kind of how I feel about all that. So, dude, great point. Not a question, but a <laughs> great point, and one that I absolutely can hang my hat on as well. Thank you all for your fan quesos. I absolutely love doing this segment. Um, if you would like to hop in and have your fan quesos answered, I always post on the Ram Showcase Facebook page. And uh, well, as well as the community section on the YouTube channel, you can comment there as well, or just be my friend on Facebook. You can I, I share the post, and you can you can comment there. That's what Edwin does. That's usually what Cody does. Uh, Jay did that last week, so that is absolutely an option for you as well. And it's social media, so yeah, just be my friend, dude. Uh, my name my my name is not Bags, or it's Branham, but you know, <laughs> but go ahead and add me up, dude, and uh, we'll have uh, some good times. So we are here, week one of the 2024. NFL season Los Angeles Rams at the Detroit Lions Ford Field this Sunday night on SNF Mike Dorico Chris Collinsworth on the call uh, have fun with this man because uh, this is going to be quite the show uh, to open the NFL season man uh, so that is going to do it for me make sure you follow on socials at Ram Showcase at Sheriff Joe Bags RamShowcase.com got a feature uh, that is actually now waiting on me to get uh, to get done uh, so now we'll get we'll get that knocked out so uh, look for your eyeballs on that. I'll make sure to post that on the Ram Showcase socials as well. Uh, but that is it. That's it, man. Week one. We're here, dude. In season. We're officially here. Uh, but that is going to do it for me. I am Sheriff Joe Bags. This has been Ram Showcase on Sports War Radio and the Fan Sided Network. For those of you who aren't Rams fans, our thoughts and prayers are with you. For those of you who are Rams fans, thank you so much for watching and go Rams. Go Rams.